Blessed be witches, it is I, Odin the Seer, and today we are starting a new series for y'all. We are going to be making our chakra bath bombs. We have just finished our mirror series, so I showed you how important it was for you to be able to connect to the cell. Part of this connection does have to do with the chakras. If you're casting a spell to bring an old lover into your life or you know you're casting a spell to bring somebody um, you know a new lover in your life and you have some serious serious issues that you need to be working on and dealing with the divine is not going to be as apt to bring someone back into your life or bring someone into your life if they're going to be treated badly and abused unless that's the lesson that they need to learn. Okay, so I always like to make it very clear. We need to get our own vibrations up. We need to connect with ourselves, our higher selves, our elemental selves. We need to be able to become a vibration that is conducive to bring in all of these things that you're looking for and all of these things that you want. The craft is not throwing a couple of in, a couple of herbs into a cauldron and you know praying that the goddess Venus brings somebody into you. No, honey, that's not the way the craft works. The craft is about evolution, evolution of the self, so that these variables, these things, these external forces can come into your life, darling. It's not about going against the grain and bringing something into your life that vibrationally can't be there. Achieving what you want out of life is gonna be the easiest thing you will ever do. Preparing yourself to be able to receive it is the hard part. That's the hard part. Not get, the divine works with you. The divine is ready for you. The creative forces are going. They're working, honey. It's all laid out for you. Do you want it bad enough? Are you willing to be uncomfortable? To be able to change yourself? To be connected to the highest aspect of who you are? To be able to bring in these wonderful things? Or are you going to sit in a darkened room and bemoan the fact that your life isn't going where you want it to go when you are doing absolutely nothing to be able to create that or allow that to come into your life. The choice is yours, boo. It truly is. So that is the reason why we are doing the chakra bath bombs today. To give you a little assist in bringing those vibrations up, helping with those auric layers, and bringing in all the blessings. That, my witches, is magic. Help me, witches, help you get ready to receive your blessings. If you have a healthy root chakra, then you're going to be strong. You are going to be connected to the earth. You are going to um, always have what you need. You are going to be able to feel secure. You're going to be able to connect with people. It's just going to give you the foundations that you need, the basis for your life, so you have a wonderful platform with which to work on. Now. If this bad boy is unbalanced, then you may have sexual dysfunction, you may have intimacy issues, you definitely are going to have um, separation anxieties, um, you will suffer from um, problems with finances, you will suffer from being detached from the people that are close to you. Another good thing or an interesting thing about this is that this or level or layer or chakra is actually connected to a place in this world. Mount Shasta, California, darling. California. Big up, Kelly. When you are, if you are ever in California or you live in California, you need to get that root chakra vibing. You want to head on down to Mount Shasta, do a little meditation and get that root chakra going. This is also using color therapy as well as aromatherapy as well as magical botanical therapy. So we're hitting it from three angles, boo. Alright, so you just throw that bad boy right into your water, you let it fizz, you feel the magic in the air, you hop on in and you just let that root chakra open and balance. So we have ginger oil here, 
we have clove oil and we have patchouli oil. Now I'm going to go into why I chose those three. Ginger is a very spicy, very, it's a strong power amplifier, but it also is very spicy and it's also very hot. So it's really good with passion and so on and so forth. So considering this is the root chakra, you want it to be passion is really where it is, right? It comes from your root chakra. It comes from the genitals. And you know, this is where your Kundalini starts. So we want to be able to give some power to that. And we want to give some spice to that. And that's why we use the ginger. Clove has a spark of creation in it. It's a seed. Okay, very, very powerful, it speeds up also, it heats up, it's very protective in its own way, shape, and form, and it is great for the root chakra and that passion center. Patchouli, it's very grounding, it's very earthy smelling, it keeps, keeps you connected to the earth. I always use patchouli when it comes to anything that is about grounding, security, foundation, stability, all in here, honey. You are also going to need some citric acid, Epsom salt, castor oil, red food coloring, because we're going to be dyeing this red, corn starch. If you're in Europe, they call it corn flour, not corn meal, corn flour. So I have my molds here, and I also have a root chakra stone. So in these, I have some tiger's eye. So molds, you can use anything that you want. Honestly, you can even use soap molds. It's quite quite all right, but I like them to be a little round and cute and stuff, and I found these for like two euros, so I was all like, I'm taking those. Um, and we have some hibiscus herb here. Now, sometimes I like to put a little bit of botanicals in there as well, because it makes it look cute, and when you throw it in the water, you have these little floaty things. If you've ever smelled hibiscus in season, it is unreal. It actually, it gets the kundalini rising on its own, and that's why a witch is using it. You are gonna need, of course, some um, measuring cups, measuring spoons, bowl, spoons, possibly a fork. It all depends. Sometimes you have to do a little make, makeshift stuff with it. So I just like to have everything there. And I also have some rubber gloves here because it can get dirty. And please also add baking soda. The baking soda and the citric acid when together will create the, the bubbling and foaming sensation, okay? All right, so we have half a cup of baking soda. Not baking powder, baking soda. And for those of you who are in Europe, it is mostly called bicarbonate of soda. Okay, so we're gonna add that right in there. So the next thing we're gonna be putting in is we're gonna be putting in one fourth cup of Epsom salts. Now this is loosely ground, because you know I like my stuff to be raw. One fourth cup of Corn starch. Now again, this is also called corn flour in Europe. And last but not least, we are going to be putting in one half cup of our citric acid. And that is the base, okay? So that is the part that's all active. And I'm going to take my spoon here, and I'm just going to mix this up a little bit. Now, oh, child, my nostrils are going to start going all fizzy. Um, now the corn flour is just a great binding agent. You want to make sure that it doesn't have enough liquid to be able to start foaming. So when you have that, that corn flour, it binds it together and that's what makes it really hard. So now we're going to put this aside and we are going to start to create our liquid part. So I've got a little jar here. All right here, so we have a tablespoon and you're going to need three tablespoons of castor oil for this, okay? Now I also like to use the castor oil because the castor oil has such great properties for the skin. So I like mine to be red. Now what I do is I will put in about 13 drops um, and then when I'm mixing it, if it's still pinkish, I will keep adding drops until I get it the color that I want. I don't make my bath bombs really big so I don't ever get my skin dyed, but if you're making a big bath bomb and you want to turn your water blood red, it may do that. So you might want to use um, soap coloring. And now we are going to add our essential oils. And I'm going to put in 13 drops of my patchouli. Ginger is very, very, very strong, right? So I only like to add three drops, drops of my ginger oil. And I will be adding 13 drops of my clove oil. Okay, so I added more red food coloring and I am going to add a little bit more of my um, clove 
and a little bit more of my patchouli because the ginger is feeling a little strong. So I wanted to share this with you because I want you to know, go with what you start feeling. I can actually start feeling resonating in the actual chakra, right? So I'm feeling I need a little bit more. So I'm gonna put more in, I'm gonna put another 13 and another 13 of my patchouli. So what we're gonna do now, right, is we are gonna start adding this and mixing this. I'm gonna put on one of my rubber gloves just in case it starts to foam a little too quickly. So I can get my hands in there and start dissipating the foam. My whole root chakra, I can actually feel a tingling sensation even up at the base of my spine, right? So I'm just going to go with this and see what happens. We're in a good place, y'all. We're in a good place. So I want to show you, I'm going to go a little closer and show you that color. Isn't that amazing? Okay. And you want it to be where when you squeeze it, okay, it forms. All right. So now that we have everything in here, we're going to put our final ingredient in here. And this is our hibiscus. I'm going to have to get Loki to help me with this right now because I am a little bit filled with this. So you want to pour this into your hands and then I'm going to pray over the whole thing. And I'm going to mix it and pray. So what you want to do is you just want to start pushing this in, okay? So this is my little diamond one that I have. Just want to push it in and you want to be quite firm when you're pushing it in, okay? You want it to mold to the actual what you're doing, okay? So now I'm going to put in my um, tiger's eye, okay? And I'm going to start doing, I'm just going to put this right in there like that. And I'm going to put some more on top of it. And then I'm going to start pushing some into the top part, okay? Now what you're going to do is you're going to take the two and you're going to push them together, okay? So now, and you can let it dry inside, but I need to use this to make other ones, so I'm taking these out right now. Wasn't that easy? Okay, so I'm going to show you how to make the second one, the, the second shape that I have, and then I'm going to finish all these up, both. So you want to push it into where it's firm. You want to have a little bit overhanging on both. Close it up. Please remember, you don't have to completely close this. The thing is, you want to press it in to a point where it becomes solid. Okay? That's, that's your main focus. And there is our second bath bomb. So you just want to let these dry overnight and they should be good to go. You can use them now if you want to, really. It's fine. Um, but overnight they'll get hard and the longer they are, the harder they get, of course. A little bit of warning here, okay? First off, make sure that you are not allergic to any of the botanicals that are going into it. Any of the ingredients. That's a must. If you are not allergic to them and you are making these, I want to let you know that you will feel some interesting things in your chakra. You may get a little emotional, um, you may have some trauma come up that seems to be blocking you, you may get tingling sensations in your lower back. These are all common side effects um, to working with your chakras and balancing them. And that is it for today, darlings. I am so excited to be doing this with you. You have no freaking idea, first off, and second off, just knowing that I can help you guys start doing the internal witchcraft, the internal alchemy, and to free, emancipate you, and liberate you from the illusions. I said it before, boo-boos, and I will say it again. It is a pleasure to have you in my world. It is an honor to have you in my magic, and you are always in my heart. I will see you again on another episode of which, <laughs> please. <laughs> I love you, Boo Boos. Bye-bye. Like RuPaul says, if you don't love yourself, how the hell are you going to love somebody else? <laughs>